If you want to be a part of the conversation before it happens here on YouTube, click that link in the description to join the free Courtside Financial Discord. What's going on, everyone? My name's Obi, and welcome back to the Courtside Financial Podcast, the podcast where we talk about business and technology. Today, we're going to be talking about something that's massive, and it's going on um, actually globally from the U.S. It's affecting a U.S. company all the way to China. We're going to be exploring um, how NVIDIA could be potentially uh, losing their grip on the Chinese EV market and how it could be a massive win for companies like NEO and Xpong and other competitors who are now manufacturing their own chips. Now, obviously, this is nothing set in stone. This is nothing that's going to for sure happen. This is not even something that I necessarily am saying that I want to happen. I just try to be objective in my analysis and what's going on in the world as it relates to the broader market. So it's going to be a super interesting, super insightful episode. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit the like button, make sure you hit the subscribe button, click the notification bell icon and leave a comment down below. All your engagement really does go a long way in helping out the channel. So without further ado, let's get into today's episode. Let me paint the picture for you. In September 2022, NVIDIA unveiled their Thor chip, and it came with all the fanfare that you could imagine. They're promising 2,000 teraflops of performance, eight times more performant than the NVIDIA Orin X chip. Everyone's excited. Chinese automakers are lining up. BYD, Li Auto, Xpong. Well, fast forward to today and things aren't looking so thorny for Thor. See what I did there? Well, let's get technical for a minute because this actually is some pretty fascinating stuff. Thor isn't just any chip. It's built on TSMC's four nanometer process and it packs a whopping 208 billion transitors. That's some serious silicon, but here's where things get complicated. Thor is integrated with Nvidia's Blackwell ar architecture, specifically designed for transformer models and generative, and generative AI, excuse me. Sounds great on paper, right? Well, here's the plot twist. Blackwell's mass production has hit some serious roadblocks. NVIDIA originally planned to ship these in Q2, but that timeline has now gone out the window. And it brings us to today's breaking news. Xpong is allegedly, reportedly, considering ditching the Thor chip altogether. Now let's talk about Xpong for a minute because this gets interesting. They actually plan to use Thor in their P7 Plus model. Their P7 Plus models launched on November 7th. But guess what? They had to fall back on the NVIDIA Orange chip because Thor just wasn't ready. That's like preparing for a space shuttle launch and taking a hot air balloon instead. But here's where the story takes a fascinating turn. While Nvidia has been struggling with Thor, Chinese automakers have been silently developing their own in-house chips. Let's break down the chip race because it's absolutely fascinating. First, we've got Xpong. They started their chip journey back in 2020. Talk about forward thinking. They've now got a team of 200 to 300 people working on their Turing chip, which just had a successful tape out August 23rd. That's not just impressive, but that's light fast development. Then there's Li Auto. They're working on something that they've codenamed Schumacher. And yes, F1 fans, that nomenclature is probably not a coincidence. But here's where it gets interesting. They're developing something called VLA, Visual Language Action Model. It's an end-to-end -end smart driving solution that's supposed to work better with their chips when it hits mass production in 2026. Well, let's talk about NEO and why I'm particularly excited about their positioning in all of this. The Shenji NX9031 chip is not just another chip. I've discussed it several times on the channel already. It's a statement. When it was unveiled in Neo Day 2023, they weren't just showing off hardware, they were showing off independence. And get this, one Shenji chip reportedly does the work of four flagship chips. That's not just efficient, that's game changing. Now let's zoom out and look at the bigger picture because this is where things uh, really, really get interesting. Two weeks ago in a video that I uh, posted, I discussed that the Chinese Association of Automobile, Automobile Manufacturers was urging 
uh, Chinese electric vehicle manufacturers to take caution when it comes to investing in U.S. chip makers. Something that I can only call a diplomatic bombshell. Essentially, they're saying, hey, rethink your relationship with U.S. chip manufacturers. Why is this such a big deal, though? Well, let's connect the dots. Most high-end Chinese EVs are using NVIDIA technology today, the Orange X chips. They're also using Qualcomm for their cockpits. So obviously, that's a lot of dependence on U.S. technology. And with the U.S. just imposing um, controls on exports to 140 Chinese companies, that dependency starts to look like a liability. Think about what it means for the industry. We're not just watching a technological shift. We're watching a strategic realignment. Chinese automakers are basically being told, build your own chips or, ri or risk your supply chain. And this is where NEO's um, investment in chip manufacturing starts to look like less of innovation and more of a prophecy. Let's break down why this matters for investors. When you're looking at EV companies, you're not just looking at car manufacturers anymore. You're looking at technology companies that just so happen to make cars. And in this new world, controlling your own silicon isn't just an advantage, it's necessary for survival. Consider this, NEO's ET9 flagship sedan is already uh, ready for pre-order, and it's going to be one of the first uh, vehicles to showcase a fully mature Chinese developed chip. While other companies are scrambling to find alternatives to Nvidia's Thor, NEO's already got their own solution locked and loaded. But here's where things get even more interesting. Remember Xpong's Mona MO3? They announced it right alongside their uh, chip new starting at under 136,000 RMB. That's about 19k USD. They're clearly targeting the mass market with this one. But here's the brilliant part: they're doing it with their own chip technology. That's like Tesla's early strategy of vertical integration, but with a Chinese twist. So looking ahead, I see three major trends emerging: a rapid acceleration of Chinese chip development, gradual decoupling from U.S. dependencies, and a new competitive landscape where intellectual actual property becomes just as important as manufacturing capability. And here's why I remain bullish on NEO in this context. They're not just ahead in the chip race, but they've got a clear vision of how they're going to integrate technologies into their broader ecosystem. Their Shenji chip isn't just about autonomous driving. It's about creating a complete technological platform. Think about it like this. While Thor's delays might be a headache for some companies, they might actually be doing Chinese EV makers a favor. They're forcing the industry to grow up faster, to develop their own solutions and take control of their own technological destiny. Before we wrap up, let me leave you with this thought. The next few years in the EV space won't just be about who can build the best cars. It'll be about who can build the brains for those cars. And right now, Neil's looking pretty smart. Anyways, that's it for today's episode of the Courtside Financial Podcast. I hope you found it useful, um, helpful, insightful, at the very least entertaining if it was any of those things, make sure to hit the like button, make sure to hit the subscribe button, leave a comment down below, click the notification bell icon, and we'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.